Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and welcome to Accidental Unreal Engine Day. Earlier today I released the video, Why Choose Unreal Engine, which went through kind of uh, the top reasons why Unreal Engine might be a good fit for you. If you haven't checked that video out, I would highly recommend it. But today what we are talking about is Unreal Engine 5.2 was released today. To be honest, I was not expecting this, otherwise I would have probably not released the earlier video in the same day. Uh, but here, if you're an Unreal Engine user, I've got you covered here on Game From Scratch. So we're going to do a quick run through of the release notes of what is in Unreal Engine 5.2. This was announced at GDC, and I think it was further along than we would have thought, because I wouldn't expect it to be ready for release at this point in time. So it's ready. Uh, they consider this a production-ready release. So what is in Unreal Engine 5.2? So uh, a number of new features here. There is a highlight video of it. We're going to skip over that right instead. We're going to jump in. Now, these keep in mind, these are early looks. So this and one of the major things, Strata, are both considered early, not ready for primetime things. The first one is the procedural content generation frame. This is a way of authoring uh, level creation tools that are procedurally driven. Uh, there's also a runtime for making it work in your large scenes. Uh, so this was demonstrated in the Rivian example, so you could see the kind of environments uh, that were created using it. And this entire thing right here uh, was authored so that using a, a variety of parameters, it just kind of reshaped and reformed in your world. When you're getting larger and larger worlds, procedural generation obviously is an important tool here. So a runtime component means that systems can run inside a game or other real-time application so the world can react to gameplay or geometry uh, changes. The procedural generation tools can also be used for linear content requiring substantial number of assets, such as a large architectural project or film scene. Now, the other thing here, again, and this is also considered early access, so it's not ready for primetime use, is Substrate. Now, Substrate is their new material system. I've played around with it a little bit. Essentially, it seems like uh, PBR++. So you've got more tools and more input nodes. It's about the double the size of a shader graph for a PBR material. So it allows you to do things like uh, create surface level, greater surface appearance parameters to work with. So it's useful for describing layered looks, for example, liquid on metal or dust on a clear coat. And you saw this example again of the Rivian. And when you zoom in really close to this, you see this pearlescent finish there. Um, that's the kind of stuff that Substrate is going to be about. It's for doing like subsurface interactions and so on. So this is their new shader option. Again, this is considered experimental. So that is below beta. Uh, so definitely not considered a production ready tool and it also does not necessarily mean that it will make it into Unreal Engine in the future although I have to assume that it's going to make it in to be honest uh, they've done improvements to their virtual production tool set so if you're using Unreal to make films there's a new iOS app for controlling things and a bunch of changes there I mostly skip over the production stuff because the majority of my audience is about game development and then another one and this one is a big one if you are in the Mac ecosystem is M1 M2 support is finally there so they have a universal uh, binary available now uh, you get native support for Apple Silicon in it I did a build version of Unreal Engine 5.1 for Apple Silicon and the performance boosts were pretty huge now it's gonna be interesting to see if they've got things like the uh, the light mapping technology and such all ported over as well so I'm gonna check that out maybe do a follow-up video to see how uh, Unreal Engine 5.2 actually runs on Apple Silicon but if you have native support basically it means better power conserv conservation better performance and, and so on it's a huge deal and generally all also better stability. So uh, app users uh, definitely are going to like this release. And there is a new sample available. The ML Deformer sample is available right now. Now I am downloading it in the background. It is currently, it's 32 gigabytes in size. So I'm not going to get it in time for this video. Um, and this does, this does not look like jacked um, a, is Mark Zimmerman to you? It kind of has that vision to me, uh, but kind of gives you an idea of, of what it's all about. So it's a number of assets in there for doing, uh, so the download includes an interactive demo sequence, so it's muscles bulging and sliding under the skin, uh, adds folds forming on clothes, can be used to compare the results with the um, machine learning deformer on and off, animate the model with the included control rig asset. Um, this sample is available, uh, but what I did find uh, is when I actually went to grab it, uh, it, it gave me an error on the site. So eventually it did work and it did download for me. Just know if you're going to check this one out yourself, you may have some issues getting this sample. And again, this thing is huge, but it demonstrates how Unreal Engine's machine learning technology can be used to create high fidelity next generation characters with deformations driven by muscle, flesh, and cloth simulations. Uh, data comes from 3D uh, art 
4D and MRI data. Uh, kind of nuts. So again, it's 31 gigabytes in size. Uh, and this license, by the way, is for Unreal Engine only assets. So you cannot use this in another engine. Not that I think it would be of any use to anybody in any way, but that sample is now available for download. So if you're into the machine learning side of things, that's what this one is all about. Now, if we jump into the full release notes, you're going to get an idea of the scope of the 5.2 release. We hit the top level stuff for sure, but I'm not going to go into complete detail of this because this is uh, the release notes. And let me just, let me just, uh, yeah, yeah. So we just kind of keep going and going and going and going. So, of course, I will link this. If you want to get into the depth of what is available in this release, there is an absolute ton here. Again, we already covered the top-level new stuff, the new procedural generation tools, the new substrate rendering system. Both of those, again, are experimental at this point in time. The new machine learning deformer sample and the Unreal Engine on um, Apple Silicon. Definitely big things there. We have uh, incremental improvements to both the Nanite and Lumen system there. Uh, not really going to jump into the details of what those changes are. We also have the path tracer. The path tracer is the uh, new rendering hotness in the ray tracing world. Uh, and 5.2 is bringing up more to feature parity with the existing rate um, renderer. Uh, so you're getting more and more new capabilities uh, with path tracing. Now, path tracing is not going to run on too many people's modern hardware. So this is more of a, a future endeavor type thing. Improvements to virtual textures and shadow rendering. Uh, improvements in the material system, such as a new switch node for switching between different texture types. Uh, we've got temporal super resolution improvements and on and on and on it goes in the rendering side of things. Got a new resource render view tool, uh, shader compilation improvements. Now this one I like, a new shader preprocessor that offers two times the speed up in shader processing and is enabled by default. Now if anything is a pain point with working with Unreal Engine. It's waiting for your damn shaders to compile. So a two a times improvement is definitely nice. Now this one actually has me a little bit confused because this is, I think variable rate shading is where they actually render less detail as you go out of your eye focal point range used mostly in uh, virtual reality headsets. At least I think that's what this is all about. And they brought it to the desktop. And honestly, I don't know what the use would be uh, for variable rate shading outside of um, the world of VR headsets. So if you got an idea on that one, let me know in the comments down below. We also have improvements to their audio system. Their, uh, what is this, 5.0, they added their new meta sounds rendering layer in there, audio rendering. Uh, we got a number of new nodes in here, Perlin Noise, Wave Table, Super Oscillator, and so on. Uh, we got localization improvements. And, and if you worked on any of the things that I'm skipping over, I apologize. They are all impressive, but there's just so much here that if I just went through things one by one, this would be a six hour long video. Now, this next thing is honestly, in my opinion, one of the coolest new features here is you can now use blueprints to create tools. You can see the demo in action right here. You know, there's a new selection mode for scriptable tools. And you'll notice he's got a custom vine tool and they can use it to just basically start drawing vines in the world. And they're gonna do a couple of vines that they created using this tool. Uh, so it's going to create making level editing tools for your designers a lot easier. And you're going to notice at the top here, this is all being powered by a blueprint. So there is this uh, blueprint vine painter. So now you can create these new tools that run inside a separate mode inside of the editor. Uh, so it's going to create uh, making the tools a lot easier because you can author your, your game development tools directly using blueprints. I think this is actually one of the coolest features. Now, as I said earlier, there is a new selection mode as a result. So there's now the scriptable tool selection mode. I got a lot of improvements to the modeling tools as well. I also think that this one is really cool. There is now this new uh, precision tool here for doing accurate uh, positioning, scaling, and so on. You can use uh, deltas to move things around. So instead of just using the widget or going over to the inspector manual, you can have this little pop out control right there uh, for handling uh, exact precision placement in your world. Also do have some improvements to the gizmos themselves. For example, translation and rotation snapping now support local coordinate systems. Uh, speaking of coordinate systems, another thing we have in this one is we now have 64 bit or was it universe or galaxy universe scale uh, sizing, which is cool. Uh, we got improvements to the polygon editing tools and the seam tools tools for UVs. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm really jumping over features here because, again, there is a lot in this release. Uh, 5.1, they added render capture baking tool. Uh, so you can bake uh, out meshes here. So for target mesh from multiple source meshes through a virtual photo or render capture. You've probably seen standalone software to do this kind of stuff. Uh, in 5.2, they updated the tool to support subsurface color channel, opacity channel, and higher quality texture multi-sampling. Uh, improvements to geometry scripting. This is actually kind of neat as well. i got to play around with it a little bit more. I think it's sort of like geometry notes from Lender. Again, something I need to, to check out myself. It's, it's a newish feature that they've added in. Uh, we got a number of improvements in the uh, animation world as well. Uh, we got re a new retargeting support, new control rig features and functionality. Um, 
just, yeah, again, there is just so much here. Again, you have that gigantic uh, machine learning uh, deformer sample that we talked about earlier on. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much the top level features of uh, the 5.2 release. Now, do think the one thing you're going to want to keep in mind with this, especially if we go uh, back to the very beginning or the summary of it, a lot of the stuff that we're looking at here, even though the 5.2 is ready for use, you're not going to want to use a lot of the star features here. Uh, so obviously, the new Mac Silicon version, if you're working on Mac, you're going to love that one right there. The new rendering stuff, sure. But the substrate, for example, that is still in uh, process. Oh, there's one other thing. I may have yada, yada, yada over this one because there's just so much here. There is the new Chaos Flesh simulation. Now, that first sounds really kind of creepy, uh, but it provides high-quality real-time simulations of deformable soft bodies. So, for example, the tire here. So, it doesn't have to be just skin, uh, but there you can see it in action. Uh, so, there are these new uh, s uh, systems for Chaos for doing things like soft body surfaces. Uh, and that is just really cool stuff there. There's, there's a bunch of improvements in that regard. We've also got things in terms of uh, simulation baking functionalities and caching solutions there. Uh, improvements to the fluid simulation, including uh, gases and liquids. The simulations are now 200% faster. Uh, yeah, the, we also have the new uh, decal or decal renderer for Niagara. I'm not really sure what you would use this for. I guess if you wanted to spray bullet holes into your scene, perhaps. Uh, again, another new feature, again, marked as experimental, is simulation caching for Niagara, which should definitely uh, speed things up once you've baked out your simulation. And yeah, it does just kind of keep going and going. I, I knew that the Chaos Flush simulation just kind of got hidden at the bottom here. And I know I'm also skipping over so many other things. And you could jump in here and get into more depth of all of the features that we're going through. But I'm going to leave it about there. I think we got the top level stuff of what is in this release. Unless, of course, you work in the uh, film world in which I just completely ignored all of the stuff that uh, is most exciting to you. But then we're just getting into the smaller fixes and changes and details that are available here. So this is a big release for sure sure. Uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Unreal Engine 5.2 now available. A lot of the features are still experimental, but uh, moving forward at the speed of light. Let me know what you think. Your most exciting new feature. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.